housing, schooling, and recovery. Oh, my. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You have clicked on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 128. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, here we are. 4.2 4. million corona cases in the United States. And you know what? Here's uh, what, the percent, thing about what percentage of them are in the state of Florida? A whole, I, I ask. A whole heck of a lot. Let me just tell you that. But you know what I, I have to say? And you're you know, still there. Go USA. When we do something, we go big. We do. We do. We're on the wrong side of this. So but, proud uh, of us. Where are you going to go? Exactly. Well, that and that's what we're we were Matt and I were discussing like what to talk about here in our episode today. And I, I you know, I stay. I do my best to focus on the positives. But boy, it does it. We have to. We're going to have a little bit of that theme throughout about how do you let go of the negative thoughts and just focus on what's positive. So we've got some things to discuss around housing. Because if you are watching any of the reports, um, anything from Inman to CNBC to just everyone, there it seems like the, the powers that be, the experts, the so-called economic experts, are surprised that housing is really currently yeah. boosting up the economy a bit. And we're going to get into why. And if you're listening, if you're a listener to the WBNL podcast and you are in the real estate profession, which is what we sort of cater to, then this is going to be some good news. So one of the things I want to share with you today is if you go over to episode 128 at WBNLpodcast.com, we have got, I've, we have shared our, the PDF of the recent report I did that we send out to everybody in our database on my team. And I do it every single month and I pull in stats from Keeping Current Matters, by the way, keepingcurrentmatters.com. I highly recommend that you go check those guys out. Get a subscription if you want to, to be able to get access. It, it only costs like 25 bucks a month and you have access to all these things that you can post online, articles, blog posts, social posts. Social posts cost a little bit more videos. Um, so 25 or 40 bucks, I have the 40 bucks because I like it. And I want this market report that they do every month where they share the slides. So I do a national, so I stay on top and have some graphics for national statistics. And then of course you've got to add your you got to have a knowledge of your own local market and then add that to it and it just really helps you stand out as an expert during all these tumultuous times so let's just jump in and we'll keep talking about that right because yeah, yeah. the housing market is now if it's this is what i'm going to keep on talking about my thoughts on how it is now but it can change because of other things we're going to talk today about meaning how prolonged is this how does it really impact our recovery the economics of it all is the government going to step in with this new stimulus package i mean as we record this today it is july 24. now here in nevada or i think here in nevada i think we have to the end of july but i think to i heard did you hear this that the that extra 600 bucks ends today ends that's now right. that's what i heard too right and so there's yep. a debate over all of that right on um, now look i am gonna just go out there and say on a limb i know because i just happen to know some people and i've heard of there are definitely people so i understand the republican side of this debate on i don't know what the answer is we can't encourage people to not get a job okay so there's unemployment benefits plus they were adding the 600 now if there was a way and this is the problem to scrub it out to find out is that person not taking their job back because they're making more money, not getting that extra 600? Because I know of cases of people who are doing that. Right. So how do you fix that problem? Right. Um, so it's just a nightmare because what, what are we going to do? They're going to hire people that are going to go and call their job, their employers, which is what I thought unemployment was all about. Hey, they're supposed to go. Hey, Matt, did you look for work this week? Sure. Yes. Did you get a job? No. OK, here's your money. I mean, that's simplifying it. But I don't think any of that is even going on right now because of the overwhelming uh, – because the local places can't even get the no, – I mean, the numbers of, are huge. There's people in Florida who can't even get their – still aren't getting their unemployment checks. That's so right. There is definitely people who don't have jobs, 
And there are people who could go back to jobs or could work, but are choosing not to. So this is a huge drama and we're going to have to see. And, there, and, and then the tenant eviction thing is the other, the moratorium that was in the CARES Act. That's ending. That one is the most scariest to me. And I frankly, I am really concerned about that. So yeah. if we record this, we're going to see what happens because I don't think the landlords are thinking this through 100%. They're thinking about me and my five properties and That's one of them hasn't right. been you know, making the payments. And I'm, if I can't get them to work it out, I'm going to evict them or start that process. Now, it's gonna. I think it's going to get more complicated than that. But can you imagine if there's in one area, thousand landlords who now say, boom, you're all evicted. Now there's going to be all these empty properties, but who's going to rent them? The people that that guy just evicted is somebody looking for a house who has a bad credit now or a history of, oh, I haven't made my payments because I don't have a job. So it's not like there's tons of people sitting around waiting for all these houses. There is demand here in Vegas, and I think it's everywhere because rental prices are super high. I've been helping some people right now and we can't, there's always multiple applications on our property. So there'll be a little bit of a, um, Hey, here's a hundred homes now that are available and they'll get filled up. It'll, but I think it's going to cause the prices to come down a little bit and it's going to cause a bigger problem. Not to say what happens to all the people who can't get into a place to live. Yeah. That's really the, the really the key, right? That really truly don't have a job and can't get a job. And that becomes this whole other thing. You know, here in our industry here, it's it's entertainment, it's hotels, it's the casinos for the majority of the jobs. It's the small bars that are all shut down again. So, you know, so let me jump into this. It's even thing. sports in Vegas, which actually is all shut down too. So, yeah, I mean, you well, know, it's like well, everything. How about Major League Baseball? Right. There were two games last night. Now, how weird was that? Did you watch any of the uh, – I didn't see it live, but I watched some things this morning – and it was just so weird. I think everybody's excited that as a sports fan to go, okay, it's baseball, but they were, it was like they were having a scrimmage match. There's Not nobody even, in the stands. It's, it's nowhere near the same thing. Uh, they're going to try to put in different, you know, but it's interesting. We're all making these adjustments, but I think it's better than nothing. I think people that have as sports fans were like, oh my God, it's great. As long as we're seeing it. Like I have to tell you, I'm so excited about hockey starting. So July 31st is going to be the first exhibition game for the Golden Knights. And then um, they're starting the Stanley Cup round robin and two so vegas couldn't you know vegas was up for running for one of the for the right. western and they were like no we're out uh and so canada is hosting all the teams not america I mean, did you happen to see there was a graph that came out just the other day that i saw on somewhere i don't even know where i saw it now that that compared the canadian uh virus uh curve and flattening over america it well, was i didn't see it absolutely astonishing how they are and now granted you know america is a lot larger population wise but the percentage difference was just unreal yeah. well, like, they barely even blipped it's like they almost immediately plateaued i, I like the graphs that are corrected and adjusted for the percentage of population because that's the fairest way to yeah, look at it. i agree of course, if we have more people than that country then of course we're going to have more cases if well it's the same way when you look at state by state know? comparisons in the united states you know what i mean i mean oh, uh -huh. you know they're the when you look at the spikes and everything and you look at, you're like, Oh my God, California and New York, have got over, you know, 400,000 cases or whatever it is now. Uh, it is over 400,000, you, you know, know in, in comparison to Montana, it's not, but that I got to say the, the sports thing coming back, hockey, baseball, it's going to help. It's going to help in a way of, of having people have something else to look forward to, because that is starting to build up in a lot of people, right? Yeah. A sense as of long as the players, stay, or, as long as the players can remain, COVID free. And that's the know. thing, you know, they already had a couple players in baseball I, over the, I saw you know, that. Yeah. they had to, they had to pull somebody from the roster. So now, you know, what's the protocol going to be? Are I had read dispense? that, you know, all of the NBA games are going to be played down at the wonder, the wonderful world of sports down at uh, Disney world. And they have had these uh, athletes quarantine for a long time. And so far the NBA players are coming out uh, where there's been no one catching COVID because they, I guess the protocols in place are really, really good. Um, but we'll see what happens because that just could just, that. but here's the thing, but think about this. What happens if, I mean, so much can happen during a season yeah. where if half a team gets sick and they can't even play anymore than a team is I out. I mean, I, you know what I mean? It's going to be we're, we're, just in, we're just in like in the middle of history. And sometimes like if you put it into perspective, you know, everybody wants to predict this or that. We're actually talking about that today. All right. I, all we can do is look at what are the facts today? 
That's right. And then look at them every day because so many things, to your point, can change everything in the behaviors. But it just it seems as a country, it just takes us forever right now to make the pivots and the adjustments. So we've got, the, and I think that the movement that's happening is we're going to talk about schooling a little bit is very grassroots is that people are just figuring out what they have to do because they can't rely on, depending on where they are in the country, um, you know, the, the powers that be the leadership to, to, to help them, to support them. So, and it's very interesting. So, so let's just talk briefly here about what's the positives if you're in the real estate business um, and what's driving national statistics. So again, go get the show notes at episode 128 at WBNL podcast, and you can get all these slides and use them for yourself. And they're from Keeping Current Matters. And you can find some free stuff over there as well. So first and foremost, what's driving the housing market? And still nationally, I have some great stats in here showing that we are down overall when you compare uh, like about 20% across the nation in sales compared to, and I have, these stats are for June. So June of last year, we're down 20%. Okay, so that's something. However, when we are also been tracking weekly here with uh with our good friend thanks to david squire our good friend david squire we get the sure. weekly stats we are back up to first quarter kind of numbers and we've been that way for quite a while and here's why mortgage rates first and foremost under three percent that happened a week or two ago first time in 50 years it's 2.93 percent for people who have good credit and all that how that's just nuts no I mean, it's crazy the first house i bought was eight and a half percent interest rate right um, and that was in 1992. Okay. So three. Or go back to that. Go back to the eighties when it was 20. 18%. I know. Right, exactly. I, I know people are listening saying that. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's causing the housing market to be strong right now? Now, yes, 20% down for those of you that are like, well, it's not as good as it was last year. Okay. Whatever. It's still strong. There are people out buying and here's why prices are staying uh, stable. They're not going down. Everybody predicted, oh, my God, the market's going to fall and we're going to have another. No, we're not because there's no inventory. It's very low inventory across yep. the country Different because a lot, for a lot of reasons, sellers are not wondering whether or not they should sell. People are sitting on the sidelines, but people still need to buy and sell houses. So that's why we're still our team is busier than we have ever been. Everybody's got tons of business going on. And it's because you just have to adjust and have conversations with people because people still there's a lot of people in our team right now. If we're a little microcosm of some older folks, uh, some of our clients who are, are retired have decided they're going to, they retired to Vegas, but they've now decided because of this, they're going to move closer to their families. Right. So somebody's going back to Iowa, somebody's going back to Connecticut. They don't, they're not in a rush to sell their house. You know, they bought it maybe for cash, but they're going to go buy another house and they're making a major decision in their life. Okay. And that's what's happening. Other indications are people are leaving the cities because now, um, high rises, all that people don't want to live in the cities. Remember years ago, it was like sure. a move to the cities. It's going to be right. the whole live, work, play. That's changing now. This is making people realize that maybe I can get a job where I'm more remote. I want to feel safer. I'm going to go find a house where I can have these zones. We've talked about it on the podcast. If I'm going to go buy a house because it's 3% interest, maybe I sell this one and I go look for exactly what I could live in. If this goes on another year or two or another virus comes by, sure. I could live in a house that I could feel comfortable in that I could go outside and I would be okay and not feel like I have cabin fever because I'm in a tiny little place that, you know, so they're even talking about how for years it's been the open floor plans that what people want now are more private, private spaces. Right. So these are all things I think are going to change. So as long as there's a demand, the interest rates stay low and people are not all putting their houses on the market, we're going to keep, seeing uh, some appreciation. So there's a great chart in here that you'll see uh, if you take a look at our notes that are the everybody from Fannie, Freddie to, let me just look at it really quick and tell you some of these numbers. Um, the projection of, there's only one, and I think it's coming from CoreLogic that is predicting at the end of the year, 2020, there'll be an overall decline in appreciation, but everybody else is in the green or it's in the orange in this chart, which means they steady like Fannie and Freddie and so on. But everybody is somewhere between 2% to 4% 
appreciation because of these conditions. And now that'll change if the conditions change. So I was just going to say that's all right? that's all. And that is like we already said is a day by day thing. You so 2020, it's got 2020, 2021 and 2022. These are their people in these different industries inside of these um, institutions making their projections that they then share with their stockholders and all that. So, yeah, listings are down 20 percent. You know, uh, pending sales, pending sales were up month over month. That's we totally have been seeing that as, as you know, we all kind of shut down March ish for most of the stay at home orders. And now we're into July. We've seen a steady increase in sales and a consistent amount of um, listings in any way in the state of Nevada or in Vegas. Um, and so some charts to show that like showings nationally have, are up 21 percent. So there's a chart in here sh through showing time. And um, some other data that says 21% uptick um, in showings because of that are either virtual or people actually physically going out. So buyers want to buy the because the interest rates are low. And the last little piece on housing here is to discuss, is there going to be an impending short sale and foreclosure market? Well, I've been talking to a lot of different people. This is an area that, that I was, um, you know, wrote courses on in the day. And I'm starting to brush that stuff off because I do believe, and this is the bottom line, people, most, there's a great chart in here about this. Okay. So nationally speaking, let me, let me say this out loud because this is actually from these guys at Keeping Current Matters. And it came from Black Knight, which is FNF Fidelity National. It's a uh, owner of the Golden Knights, his company, Bill Foley. Um, here, it, here's a quote from Black Knight, which is his parent company. Um, the high level of equity provides options for homeowners, policymakers, mortgage investors, and services in helping to avoid downstream foreclosure activity and default related losses. So we've been saying this on the podcast, majority of people in the country have equity in their houses, unless they just purchased last month, That's right. last year, and compounded with that, they did low down, very low down payment. So the, the perfect storm for people that are going to be in the foreclosure slash short sale hurt, which I predict could get to about 20 percent of the market here based on Nevada's economy. OK, and what I'm looking at sure. because of our hire, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm concerned and I talked to a, a short sale specialist, a guy who was in the day doing this and he's getting he does them now. And right now in Clark County, Las Vegas, um, it's only two, short sales are only two percent of the overall sales, two percent. It's been like that for quite a while. Yeah, a There's time. always a few people in there that have, have issues, right? I think that could grow, and so does he. And he thinks within three months he's going to start to see because he's already getting phone calls from people. And they're the people who just bought a house recently, didn't have a lot of money down, and they don't have a job. All right? So right now, the stat says of all active forbearances, so this is important, which are past due on their mortgage payment, 77% have at least 20% equity in their house. So of all the forbearances in the country, and there's a lot of them, people that lost their jobs because sure. they do have 11.1% as of the last time they, you know, they put the monthly stats out for June, 11.1% national unemployment. That number, by the way, is 15% here in Nevada. Um, you know, it's, there's still people that have equity, but however, I do, I'm going to keep on predicting 15, 20% is going to be within, I think, six months because of the. Uh, CARES Act. And we have to see what the government's going to do, right? Uh, the CARES Act has a provision in it. If, if the person's home that owns their home is Fannie or Freddie or VA backed, government backed, they have six months, six months of forbearance. They can apply for an additional six months, okay, of, of forbearance. So now somebody could potentially, but they have to show hardship. And I'm sure they have to, this is where their banks are going to come in and say, you're going to have to you know, we've been so crazy right now in COVID. It's like, okay, we're going to work it out with you. But if it continues on, this is where the banks are going to start going, all right, we got to have some paperwork here to, to show that you really have that, right? It's going to be a nightmare, to be honest. But I remember when back well, in the, the fact of the matter sale, is a lot of most people are going to be able to prove that they do have a hardship. That's, that's correct. Thing. So the short sale, you know, in the short sale craziness, the banks were so inundated that it just took forever. So people lived in their homes. I remember for one to two years here in yeah. Nevada. Remember Vegas oh, was, yeah. was really a hot spot for this. And so was Florida. Sure. There was parts of California where short yeah, sales definitely. were huge. Yep. But here's the thing. And I'm talking to people saying, look, there's people who are in homes right now that live through that. And they know, they know. And so here's the deal. If I have, a, if I've lost my job and I have my mortgage 
and I have whatever else is going on in my world and we, I can't pay that mortgage and I work this out. I, I can't just sell my, so I'm saying people are going to sell their house and get their equity out, but here's the problem. Where are they going to go? They have to go somewhere and make a payment to a rental now. So it's just going to be interesting to see because people are going to either combine their, their, their resources and buy together, or they're going to go live home or I don't know. I mean, what is going to happen if you can't, if your credit is gone to hell because for a year now you haven't made a mortgage payment, well, they're not supposed to be able to re report that actually in via the CARES Act. But if, if they now call to find out that you haven't made a payment and you don't have a job, how do you get a, how do you get a, a rental? Right. So I, I think that people are going to stay in their houses until they're booked out, kicked out, which now take a year of not making payments with not as much equity, now we're going to look at short sales. So I'm going to stick with that. And that is what I think could potentially happen. Well, it's logical. All right. So just a couple other quick conversation, Matt, around the economy. Um, there are a couple slides in this here to tell you that, you know, and unfortunately, I, I these are from June and it's already shifted. So, yeah. you know, I, I did a report saying, and I went and got the Nevada statistics to say that, um, you know, so just to give anybody that's Nevada listening, because we do have a lot of realtors that listen here from Nevada. It's a great chart in here showing the unemployment, how it went to a high of tw we were the highest in the country for a minute there in the, in the March, April timeframe, 28.2% in April. It went down to 25.3% in May and it dropped to 15% in June because 75, when they opened up the casinos and all the bars and everything in phase two, 75,000 people got their jobs back. Okay. Now, in the last two days, Matt, in exactly. the last in the last two days, the news here in Clark County in Nevada, Las, Las Vegas area has been how casino after casino is announcing not just furloughs, yeah, permanent layoff. permanent yeah. um, you know layoffs. So I predict that that fifteen percent is going to bounce up in July. Now we're going to have this whole, and so each area of the country has its story, and you have to know it. You have to be aware of this, and that's what's going to potentially impact. Now, even though this is happening here, I think it ultimately, if if people are not coming out in droves to these casinos, even though they have put all these protocols in place, uh, Bally's just yesterday opened. I didn't even know some of these casinos weren't even open. Right. There are not 100% of them are open. Some of them are already talking about closing. Yeah, and are even there's some of them, they're only open on the weekends or Thursday through Sunday, I've read too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's something I think that the uh, one of the wind properties or the Venetian or somebody. Yeah, I think it was that. a Venetian. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Matt, that's this is what we're going to be seeing what happens because it's not just it's not just people come in here as a tourist to gamble and ha come to Viva Las Vegas. It's all of the um, huge piece is the uh, uh, what do you call it convention uh, conventions. Sure. And conventions aren't going to be happening. And, and sports. No, I We've mean, got the Raiders. The Raiders are supposed to start open. Are, they built this beautiful stadium. Is anybody going to be in it? I mean, there's going to be so many billions of dollars lost here in this economy. The projection here for Vegas is it could be two to five years to get back to where, where it should be. If it goes on for another year, um, it's going to be like a three to five year recovery for uh, for the sure. for the economy here, which then impacts all these jobs, which will have an impact on housing. But the upside for housing in our state and this is the, the conversation we're talking about here. If you're listening as a, as a realtor or a professional, you have to know this for the area that you live in. Yep. So you can go get the national statistics, but what is, what's impacting you? Where are you and is, and what's happening that's impacting you? If you're in Florida, it's a whole other nightmare. Well, I'll okay? tell you not only that, I mean, one thing that's impacting everyone everywhere is the closures of restaurants and bars. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that is a, a, a staple across all of the country and it's having a huge local economic impact that alone. Great thing is in most of the places, if they can afford to do so, are doing carry out and they're still being able to stay afloat. You know what I mean? But a lot of them have already gone belly up. It's interesting around here. It's just very it, it, I, I, so many places have already closed for good and more and i have this in my notes as a point we're going to talk about next which was thank you small businesses who will survive yep. and i also just like you we all know because of this rollback like in in each in different states of they serve some of them survived the first time but can they survive now and so you know what's going to happen and here's the here's the interesting thing i think that we should all watch there are going to be businesses close and not open up again yep and there are going to be the people who are the forward thinkers who think outside the box, 
who figure out how to pivot their entrepreneurial spirit to something that will survive this pandemic. So if you're a brick and mortar store, for example, how do you get into some kind of business or how do you take your business and have a digital component to it? Can right. you drop ship your goods? Now, if you're a restaurant, different story, unless you have, unless there's been some very interesting entrepreneurs who have done switch to things that people want to drive up and buy and get. Like I can think of something in New York or someplace that was like, they had a really cool, very traffic store and they started just switching to selling donuts or bagels or something. It was bagels, I think. And uh, all of a sudden they're killing it because they just changed their thinking. Remember how we were talking about hedgehog concept with yep. uh, good to great makes me think of that. Like who is, so you got the people just like in the real estate business going, Oh my God, we have this pandemic. I don't know how to change the way I think and work. So I'm just going to not do anything that's happening. And I think you could have that in the business world. Well, it is what it is. I don't know anything else other than how to make hamburgers. Well, do you, could you figure out something else that you could do? And that's where I feel like what's going to happen is there will be people who can't do it, but the, the people who are going to win in this are the people who are figuring out sure. what's happening in the world, what's happening in the future. How do I get that business going? But what's interesting about that too, just talking about the bigger picture, when you start looking at different ways to, uh, uh, kind of rethink your business model. I, I would, I would guess, you know, eight out of ten times or nine out of, out of ten times, that's going to mean a dr dramatic reduction in staff. Absolutely. Um, which is going to be once again, the whole thing is just a domino effect, right? So, yeah. you know, it's, um, you so know, people, people are going to have to start doing it, but it's going to, it, it doesn't solve the Matt, bigger problem. Those people that are getting laid off. They also have to go. The worker mentality has to go. I can do something more than serve. Sure. I could figure. You know what something I've enjoyed? I, I actually have noticed this, and I read an article on this. I don't. I don't. I think it was in the New York, either New Yorker or New York Times, one of the two, um, about how Etsy has completely blown up. Totally. Because, an example. Exactly. Because people have some sort of artistic ideas or they, they have a passion about something and they are they making as much money as they're making for? Probably not, but they're making some money. So just things like that have shifted. And, you know, there's already a there was already a trend towards that anyway. Absolutely. Uh, but it has been a, a, a big a bigger deal. You know, coronavirus. Is, coronavirus is the great accelerator. Yeah. It's the great accelerator it has accelerated trends that were already happening. People moving back uh, into the suburbs, um, people using more technology, companies working remotely. This is not the first time people have decided that it wasn't the virus that had some people have been working remotely for a long time. I think there's going to be more of that. So the person that needs a new, a new, they have to kind of look at what could I do? Could I go online and get some other training? Could I switch gears and go do something that I can work out of my home from? Right. I'm just saying there are going to be things. There's all, there's going to be high unemployment. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it's just going to be miracles and there's all these jobs, but you have to think, Think of, my whole point is I can't wait to sort of watch. This is what we're doing, right? Yeah. I've, I've, you and I, what we did with David during on March seventeenth is in within a week we had launched the thirty day challenge. That's, That's what right. I'm talking about. We got our minds together and we're like, let's get everybody motivated, which That's then exactly right. has has been the catalyst for a lot of things to happen behind the scenes. But what it's happened is Matt and David and I are focused on. Uh, taking our WBNL coaching digital content to a new level and using the power of Zoom to do a group coaching thing that we're calling Elevate. Um, more of all of this, it's just been a little slow getting it all going because we all are making adjustments in our lives and yes, we are. figuring things out and getting it going. But we've been working diligently on our new platform and we're hoping now, we were hoping to get it in June, July, but it looks like an August launch and just more to follow. We're going to get the word out and let you know what we're doing because we've figured out how to adjust and adapt. We already had a platform, but we, we went to, we're going to a better platform and then it's going to be really good to go. The last thing on the economy, and we talk about schools as we finish up today's episode, is the last couple months um, when before the, the, you know, with the predictions of the virus getting under control, it, everybody was projecting, most economists were projecting a V-shaped economy. So we dipped down. And as long as everything is under control with the virus and people go back to work and people start spending again, we discovered we had a little of that, but now not so much. So now we're looking at more like a U shape. That's right. Um, or maybe worse. It just depends on how long. And so that's up in the air now, too. And again, it's it's like we we can say this is what it looks like today. But if if all of a sudden we're, you know, I mean, it's kind of scary when you think about what's going on right now. And then all the, the medical experts are saying it's going to get worse. Like it's going to get worse in the fall and the winter. I'm like, really? It, it's going to get worse. What, what, like, 
it, have you read some of these predictions? Like sure. it's not, not going to be over until 70, 75% of the population has have been it. exposed. Yeah. Or you know, what's it? interesting. You know, what's interesting though, I think there is a, uh, finally, uh, a lot of the people that were naysayers on mass and naysayers on, and, and just almost like on the pandemic in general are starting to come around now, granted, four months late, which we could have flattened a long time ago if everyone would have. But I mean, just in the last week, the shift to masks are patriotic, patriotic. Hello. You know what sure. I mean? It's a big deal. Even I'm going to tell you this last was on that train, right? Yeah. Last time. And, and that's what the, a leader needs to do. Right. So mm -hmm. last week when we talked, I was talking about all the counties here in Southwest Florida, every single one of them turned down masks, um, uh, a mask mandate in just this last week, two of those counties have reversed their idea and have put mask orders in place. And so here's it's, the deal. it's a shifting, it's a shifting thing. So we might be able to get this a little bit more in control. If everyone just gets on the bandwagon from the health authorities and, you know, and, um, uh, experts. Uh, I I think it's going to take leadership, but I also think it's going to take people making well, yeah. decisions. It it's both. It's a combination. Right. And just saying, we, we need to get through this. Or do you just want to have this go on and but on But the and problem on? was, the problem really truly was, and still is to a certain degree, that the leaders were saying one thing and the people that that believed those particular leaders followed their lead. So, you know what I mean? Now that things will change, maybe it will start to, there's going to be people that are anti-mask no matter what. Fine. That's fine. But the percentage of those people is going to go way, way down. That's the governor said, let's wear masks yet. Well, everyone but him. Okay, well, of course I not. Think he would do it because Trump just well, did it. You know why he might start doing that? Because his approval rating just went way into the tank in the last uh, two there days. So thank All you right. very much. Mostly because of schools. So let's, let's switch to, let's, let's switch to that. Thank you. So schooling. So yeah. why don't you start this discussion? And then I, I want to share a little bit about this whole idea of pandemic pause. I've been doing some research because I'm trying to help my from my perspective, I'm, I, we have, you know, I, I talk about my little six and a half year old uh, great nephew who I watch on Saturdays. And, you know, here, just like you said, in California, they're not, we're going right now. It's been Nevada and California are both saying end of the year, it's online. Right. So what do you know? And you, your wife is a teacher, fourth grade teacher. So right. why don't you start this discussion? Yeah, I, I, you know, just the, the whole school thing, you know, I, I just it's just like reopening the country. Everybody understands that, yes, we want schools to reopen. I mean, that's sure. just that's just logical. Yes, you want your kids to have interaction. You want them to have the socialization. You want to have the hands on learning. You want all of that. But like I said last week. You know, we need to not look at this as, you know, uh, the uh, a sprint. This is more of a marathon. So let's just let's ease it down a little bit and take it down a notch. Everything I've heard over the last month about schools reopening has been the reopening with zero planning about how that's going to happen and what's going to be and what is going to happen when that all takes place. You know, um, everything that I ha you hear online, on the news, anywhere you are talking about it with people, it all revolves around how kids are going to be hurt when, if they don't go back to school. I, that's all fine and good. And like I, I, once again, like I said last week, I think that there's probably long-term effects that will happen if it goes on for years, but I think we can all push it back a few more months and figure out the right way to do it in order for everyone to be safe. Yeah. But what you're not hearing about, and this is really infuriating to me, is the health and well-being of the teachers, the principals, the nurses, the cafeteria people, the, right. the custodials, all the people that actually help to put <laughs> make it all work. You know, and what about uh, the jobs? Those, right. those not the teachers exactly. maybe are going to get paid, but what about all the people so, that support us? So on, so on top of all of that, the thing that has become really, really glaring to me, and this is the problem that we need to look at as a nation, because other countries have figured this out. Um, uh, we do not, it's become the pinpoint of a school being daycare for your kid is becoming extremely obvious. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it isn't because people need both people in your, you know, uh, both spouses to work in most families to be able to survive in this economy and in this environment. Right. But at the same time, school has never been and never should ever be looked at as daycare for your kids. Right. And it really irritates me when people get on that bandwagon because, uh, hello, uh, my wife's school district had a four and a half hour Zoom meeting yesterday with the uh, school board, the union, uh, teachers, parents, everything. Went on for four and a half hours, a lot of debate yeah. uh, about what was going on. Uh, and, you know, they, uh, you know, they're not opening live classrooms uh, the fall, but there's a lot of, there's still so many questions about what is the curriculum curriculum look like? You know, how are, you know, what is going to be the responsibility of the parents? Where, you know, what hours are the teachers, you know, really, uh, supposed to set up. I mean, you would think that your school hours should be exactly the same. Wouldn't you yeah. think? 
Exactly. I'll tell you right now, when the, at the end of school last year, my wife would get up at eight o'clock, she'd be online with her kids and she'd be online sometimes until eight o'clock at night answering questions. Well, teachers are not paid. No one is paid to be able to answer questions about school for 12 plus hours a day. It's wow. absolutely ridiculous, right? And the reason why that happened is because the parents were taking control of the school situation, which is absolutely absurd. They are not in charge of the schools. The school how, is in charge you, of the schools. How, what, did, what did that look like? I don't understand that. Because they would be like, oh, my kid can't do this in the morning. They're only available to be online in the afternoon. Oh, well, you know what? That's just too damn bad because here's the deal. They didn't have a choice whether or not their kid could be in school in the afternoon when they were in That's school. When I am available to have exactly. my Exactly. So here's the deal. Everyone just, and I'm not saying there are, and you're going to talk about it in just a minute regarding these pods. There are, there are solutions around this, but everyone needs to stop thinking just about me, 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 and needs to think about how we can be better for the whole system and for everyone involved. Because that at the end of the day is all that's going to work. Cause I'm going to tell you something, you go back into school and all the teachers get sick. Some of them die. There are going to be no schools and no teachers. So I know that's a dramatic statement, but at the same time, that's where we were headed if all these schools were going to open right back on up. Right on. I totally hear you. So that's my soapbox. And, and let alone the whole uh, different medical data about kids are not carriers. Or, the kids aren't carriers. That is the most it, absurd it, thing I've ever heard in my entire life. As many kids who've been sick and so oh. like, really? I, I, I mean, really? You want to go ahead and put our, the not just the kids' lives in danger, but to your point, every other adult that they're around? Yeah. So like I, like I said, and you can, you can take over now because you, you have actually heard of some solutions. That, that's the point. We need to stop talking about business the way it was and start finding yeah. out new solutions yeah. together on how we can move things forward. This is where I feel like, you know, maybe, and I hope behind the scenes, and we don't know because we don't see it from like a perspective of everything's reported, but you know, that's why I'm so happy you shared with what Laura is going through. It's like, what is happening in the school districts? Aren't, are people thinking outside the box? Are they thinking up solutions? I mean, or are they sitting around waiting for the NAT, the federal government to tell them what to do or the state to tell them what to do? Because I feel like, so that kind of leads me into, I, I was like, um, I don't, you know, I, I have, my great nephew and I'm like, well, let's try to figure out what there has to be other parents that are going through. I have to work. I'm a single parent. What can we do? And can't they just all sort of get together and figure it out? Because it's not as big of a deal for the kids who are what, how old do you have to be to be by yourself? 13, 14 years Probably, old. Probably, Yeah. Um, how old are her, how are older Laura's kids? Nine and 10. Right? Yeah. So they need supervision. What you think? Yeah. Mom and dad can't go to work and let a nine and 10 year old run around in the house and, and no. that they're going to sit and follow this, just, you know, be the, the daycare, right? The, the teachers, the daycare, when they're in the room with them, that's, that's exactly what has been happening because the parent can feel safe and secure that their kid is being taken care of while they're and supervised and they're learning hopefully and all of that. Right. And it gets converted into what you're talking about. Right. And, and I think people are now realizing people realized back when uh, this first happened, Oh my God, the teachers have to do a lot of stuff here to, Yep. because I know how to, I know how hard it is to manage my kid. Sure. To, sure. To sit down. Cause I think the teacher's better at getting the kids to do stuff because these people, most of these kids don't have any structure in their families anyway. You know what I mean? Not all parents are good at saying, okay, put the games away. We're going to actually go do this, you know, learning experience. Well, if you think about it during the, your, the 12 years of schooling, uh, a teacher is around their kids more than you're around your Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. And it's always about structure. It's about structure and it's about a schedule and about where you have to be. And there are some people that raise their kids that way in their home. And then, you know, so sure. and very interesting. So what I found, I did a little Googling and I started seeing some articles that have popped up about pandemic pods and I'm like, and micro schooling. And I'm like, what's this? So it is a total grassroots efforts. It's these people that have just said, all right, we got to figure this out. And so, and it's growing quickly. And if you have listening and you haven't heard about this, I'm sure you have, because if you have school kids, you've probably been figuring out what the hell am I going to do? Um, and so the, I already found three Facebook groups that are right here in Vegas and Henderson, where they're trying to connect people and saying, you know, how do we all help each other out? How do, how do we like, who has a house that can take the kids on this day? You know, like small pods of kids, right. And with a, with a, with an adult. So it's even starting with an adult to finding people that are like, not like nannies, but it's sort of like a whole new service that could be coming out of this. So maybe people who are retired teachers or people who know how to have that background or they're, they've been nannies or they've been teacher's aides or mentors or something potentially 
uh, families getting together to hire somebody jointly to be the one who supervises the kids so they can get this stuff done. All kinds of things, all the way to homeschooling. There's always been a percentage of homeschooling, but that's not the solution for the people who need um, homeschooling is a choice, right? right? Homeschooling is not a choice if the if the parent is a single parent or both parents have to work to be able to pay the bills. So it's very interesting. So just there's a couple articles. I have a New York Times article and a Today.com article that just came out like yesterday talking about parents create micro schools, pandemic pods. And I just think it's intriguing because it's grassroots effort. People are going yep. to, have to take charge of this because it's great. I think, I, I, I think that is an interesting solution. As long as in those pods, they are practicing social distancing, wearing masks and doing all the things. You know what I mean? It, it goes back to the whole thing, because if everyone just started doing that and it was willy nilly, it, we would see another spike. So I think I think the smart way they're going to do it, it's not like there's going to be some house or some place with a room with 30 kids in it. No, it'll be like four or five kids. Yeah, I think it's or three kids. Lot. It's like here's five people that are getting together. I have three kids. Well, you have three yeah. kids. You know, we our kids play together. We're in the, you know, yeah. we have similar schools and we can divide our house up and, you know, I don't know. I just, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out, but just go Google it and check it out and, and see that that might be a solution because, uh, you know, so great. The schools say we've got to do online. The school districts, like your, where your wife is trying to figure out what the curriculum is going to look like. They're starting in a month. There's time, you know, they'll get all that going, but it doesn't solve the problem of the people that are in. We haven't even talked about the problem of the people who can't afford a, that don't have internet connection. So what do you do if you don't have internet in your house and you can't pay for that and you don't right. have a device that your kid gets on? What happens to those kids? Right. They Well, I mean, the, 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 the very simple thing that they do is there's a whole, I mean, because it's, there's, well, there's it's, always, I there's mean, materials anyway, you know what I mean? And not, here's the thing also. And this, uh, this, that talking to that issue has is, is always been a bone of contention when you talk to a lot of teachers because um, it's easy just to throw people online, but that's not really an effective way of learning. It has, it has proven not to be an effective way of learning. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. giving them an online assignment, especially yeah. younger kids. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's still a lot of material that can get to kids where they can actually learn. And, and you know, just even by reading uh, to, to keep people stretching along. I just think that we, you know, haste makes waste, right? And I think there, there's never been a... Um, uh, anything that is more that has never been more relevant than it is right now. We cannot speed into things without a plan because it's going to be way worse if that's the case. So um, I think that, that people just need to come together. At the end of the day, we are we are very strong and uh, inventive and entrepreneurial uh, people. We can come up with solutions if, and if we just start working with each other and against it instead of against each other. There it is. And honestly, isn't that a fresh approach as opposed to saying what side of the aisle are you on? Exactly. Are you mask or no mask? You know, no, it doesn't even have to be about that. Can't we just all come together? There's an opportunity here and I like this grassroots sort of effort and it's not about um, you're wrong or the government's wrong. It's about let's just figure this out and we're all people, whether you're in a leadership position or you're a politician, or we're all people. Don't we all want to get through this and survive yeah, and be on the better exactly. side of it's it? A, it's, it's not about finding out what's wrong, which is where we are. And I don't know why that would be because that's what our leadership does, right? Focus on the negative, but you focus on the positive. Find what's right. But here's what's so important about, especially with this teacher thing, and I guess this really actually relates to everything. When you're making decisions and talking, you're speaking your mind and doing your thing, you have got to walk in everyone else's shoes, not just your own. That is the key to the whole thing to me, right? You have to understand the mind frame and the reasons why other people are, are having the, the are making the choices that they are. And if you don't do that, you will never be able to come together. That is, that is, you know, that is just negotiation because, 101, well, right? And it's about being able to see the other side and exactly. not shutting down to your right and they're wrong. And it's a lot, asking a lot, but you know what? Maybe this is all about what we're going through is major crisis brings the good and the bad out That's people, right. for sure, depending on who you are and no doubt. the extremes. Okay. So we, we want to work on this together. So anyway, this is. So thanks for thanks for listening to our uh, maybe I don't know if you're listening you're, this is a very timely discussion so as we record yes, this it's July 24th you know a couple months from now if you come across this episode it'd be interesting to go wow they were either right on or wow they didn't see what was coming and that's what's kind of interesting because we are living in a major thing years from now they'll come back and will be you know the people will be studying what we're living through yeah. which is very intriguing or why not, don't wait two months check back in next week because i'm telling you right now there has been so much happened in the last seven days since our last podcast you know what i mean and no doubt even next week it's going to be extremely different than this right now well in the coming weeks here we're going to be sharing ideas of things that, that are working 
and like what's working in our real estate business. And That's uh, right. I want to be able to share a couple ideas with you on that. Um, I think I'm going to come back and have a good conversation around taking what I just shared today and how to put this into a very yep. easy connection because we're having success with this, this hyper-local newsletter that I have been talking about for years on the podcast and I think that should be our topic. I think that's a great and, idea. And I'll be happy to share what it is we do and uh, some success stories around that in our team because everybody always says they're going to do it and they don't do it. We've found a way to do it and now we're sharing it and it's getting out to our database which then getting some uh, responses and it's led to some business just because we sent it around. That's so. cool. Well, good stuff as always, Jan O'Brien. Remember everyone, you can go over to the show notes over at wbnailpodcast.com, episode 128, and uh, get all the great information and links that Jan talked about today uh, uh, over there. And, uh, and just, you know, change your mind, change your mind frame just a little bit. As always, we say that all the time. Let go of the negative, work on the positives. And be and forever wandering, but not lost. There it is. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube.